I can remember leaving England, crossing the English Channel. It was not a very nice day. It was you know, kind of misty and rainy. And I, I, I do remember as, as the day started to become brighter in the morning, I looked around and as far as I could see on the horizon, all I saw was ships. As far as I could see, all around in, in the channel. The sky was full of planes. I look up and you see planes coming in, dropping bombs and going back. It was, just, it was a sight that I, I was just <laughs> astounded at the time. And uh, then uh, as we arrived at the beachhead, we, we kind of guided in some of the landing ships that were coming in. And then also the, what they call the LCVPs, they were the little landing patrol boats that actually landed on the beach. And I, I, you know, I can remember, uh, I gotta get this over with. I can remember one particular landing vehicle that came right alongside us and heading toward the beach. And we were maybe 50 yards away from it and it was filled with young troops. And when I looked over and saw them, and they were all kids at the time. I was only 20, but they were kids, they were 18, 19. And we kind of tried to encourage them, we all thumbs up. And I never forgot the look on their faces. They just, they just looked, never smiled. I just, I, I couldn't forget the look on their faces. They were all, you know, sad. And I, I, after they went by, I, I just walked back and I said, "Oh, I thank God that he had me join the Navy instead of the Army because I could have been there with them." And that, that was one of the worst days of my life. And. Uh, and then we proceeded to come back and escort other, other ships it, close to the beach. And then we did some patrolling along the beach, you know, in the water. And uh, occasionally, some, we'd hear a big explosion and one of the ships would hit a mine. There were mines in the water. And you know, occasionally a, a ship would hit a mine blow up, sometime they sank within, within an hour. Sometime they, they, they listed and took them several hours before they sank. So that's when we proceeded to go along as many as possible, take off the wounded and put them on our ship and transport them to a hospital ship. Uh, there were, there, were, there, were, there were quite a few of those. Uh, I, I remember going aboard one ship, the L, uh, it was an LST actually, that had been hit by a mine. And uh, we, we took off many of the wounded on the decks that we could find. The ones that were, we you know, felt were dead, we just didn't bother, we didn't, didn't touch them, we just got the wounded off as many as we could. We had stretches, we put them on stretches and put them on our ship. And then when we didn't have any more room, we'd go to, then take off and go to a hospital ship. Did, did you even have time to kind of process what was happening or was it just? Did I what? Did you process what was happening or was it just? Not well, really. Just doing one thing to the next? Not really. Thing? At the time I wasn't, I wasn't thinking of anything except how to get these guys off the ship and get them on our ship because that ship was going to, that one was going to sink. It was just a matter of time. And um, uh, one, one, one particular LST that was hit, we went aboard it and we took off as many of the wounded as we could. 
and I, I, I still believe to this day I was the last one off that ship because I was near a bulkhead and I could hear voices behind the bulkhead saying, help, help, lift. In those days they had these, I don't know, I don't know how to say it, these, uh, the doors were sealed, then they had big long uh, things that would... The turn. Yeah, 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 but they were, they were like a one handle, you know, mm -hmm. turn. And, and, and I could hear them be screaming on the other side, you know, we can't lift the handle, we can't lift the handle. You know, is anybody out there that can do it? And I was near there, so I, I immediately went over and, and tried to do it, but the bulkheads were warped from the explosion, and the thing wouldn't budge. You know, I, I, I thought I'd break my back trying to lift it, but I couldn't do it. And I looked around to see if I could find a pipe or something, a hollow where I could get some leverage. In the meantime, the captain of my ship was screaming for everyone to get off the ship, off the LST. So I tried, I, I, I looked around, I couldn't find anything, couldn't budge the door, and finally had to, I was the last one off that ship. They were just, the, my ship was ready just to leave when I jumped aboard. And I was the last one off and jumped on the ship. And then within, I'd say within five to six minutes later, the ship just kind of turned over and so. And all those guys were still alive on that ship. It was it was, it was a hor horrible time. Um, and then we went aboard a couple of other ships, and again did the same thing. You know, we got bodies off—not bodies, but wounded people. We were laying them down on our deck. Your mission that day was to save lives, basically. You went from ship to ship saving lives. Well, yeah, but, yeah, because, you know, if we were in the area where it was hit, then we were, like, almost the first ones there. And it was, what we did was we pulled up alongside, took off as many people, wounded people as we could, and um, then we'd have to take them. There was also a hospital ship anchored there and bring them to the hospital ship and then go back and patrol to see where else we could go. And we did that for about two days, continuously. And, uh, and then we've had some mishaps even after that. Every once in a while, some ship, a destroyer escort, I remember, hit a mine. Another one was a destroyer that hit a mine. And, you know, we, we just, and there's not much you can do when something like that happens. Those ships were so much larger than ours that we couldn't even go over to help them. We, we, got, we went off the smaller ships, the landing craft, the, the, uh, the LSTs, destroyer escorts. You know, they, they, were, they were the smaller ships, but we couldn't go near the big, big ones because they just were useless there. First four or five days that we were there, there was gun, there was gunfire going over our heads all day long from the cruisers and the battleships, which were way out, and they had huge, huge guns, and you know, they would fire over, over our heads and, and try to knock out bunkers on the, on the beach. And by the same token, the Germans were firing back and trying to hit whatever ships they could. So you, you never knew who was going to get hit or who wasn't. Just like five days of pure fear. No. Yeah. It was, you know. But it, so it didn't, it didn't necessarily feel like a success in the moment. It felt devastating. At the moment, yeah. no. We knew we were making some headway, but, you know, we had to keep sending troops in, you know, paratroopers, paratroopers coming over all the time, and then, you know, jumping behind the lines. And, you know, it, just, it was just a harrowing few days that it just didn't know what was really, we didn't know what was really happening. Can you believe 75 years have passed? It's a long time. <laughs> yep. Yep. What do you think about when you think 75 years? I mean, what is that? 
Does what? it feel like yesterday in some ways, or does it? No, not really. I, you know, I, I, I tried to erase it all from my mind as much as I could. But you know, at that different intervals, it would, it would, you know, come back to me, and uh, it was very. Did, it wasn't. It wasn't good when when I'd think about it. You know, various things. You know, when I was aboard an LST, I could see bodies all over, cut in half, and all blown up. And you know, at the time that, at the time that I saw all that, it didn't hit me. You know, of, of how horrible it was. It was just afterward when I started to think about it that I said I just can't believe what I saw.